Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. Last week I did a sailboat painting where I used Wax Resist, and so I thought I'd explore Wax Resist a little bit more today. The two types of wax crayon that I use are an actual white wax crayon bought from an art store. It's clear, there's usually one in the watercolor section, and a birthday candle. Use the non wick end and it makes a very soft, soft effect. Use wax crayons to resist an area. So let's say I want that to be completely white. Now I want it to stay paper white. Now you can see a little bit in this small sample that this, the birthday crayon, is a little, or candle, is a little bit softer than this. And so this would be better if you're going to hit and miss edges. This would be better for a very soft effect. Now this is not going to go away. You can see it a little bit more darker. Um, I've seen places saying that you can iron it off with newsprint. Well, you can. All of it's not going to come off and it also damages the paper. So when in doubt, use masking, don't use a uh, wax crayon. But wax crayons are terrific because unlike masking, it's a very hit and miss effect. All right, so let's say I'm going to paint an ocean. I'll just stick with one. This is what I've been using lately. I don't think it really matters. All right. And you can only tell where lines are by the sheen. Okay, so I've got a little bit of wave action. Waves are coming in. So I'm just, I'll paint oceans and stuff later. This is just for wax crayons. So I've got some cobalt blue, maybe blurring up to a lovely cobalt blue sky, which isn't really in the wax crayon. And then maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue just for that dash of, I can see the resist showing up. And then, some cobalt teal here. And you see how that hit and miss on cold press paper, this is cold press arches, not rough. The hit and miss really starts to make it because I'm not getting a solid feel like I would with masking. Now, do you have to use it at all? No, you can go around it. There's some uh, contest and things like that that don't want you to use anything. That's great too. But you can see how it's a very different effect where I'm using that. And you can see layers. So this looks very different than when I went around an area. And the combination of that makes it a little exciting. And you might even say, ooh, I like that golden color, but I need to paint some other colors in there. So usually I wait for it to dry before I do this. Or I like this little bit of light here. Maybe I want some soft blues here. And you can go over where you've already painted. And you'll end up resisting those colors. Now that's handy. Very handy. So you can see how layers upon layers of that really can end up interesting and you're not having to worry about resisting those colors. 
All right, so let's do the same thing again with a different subject. Let's say I have a palm tree right here, and I love painting palm trees. It's one of the upcoming lessons for sure because I've got some great pictures of palm trees. That So I am going crazy here. I am pulling out all these whites, pulling lots of stuff out. I want to make sure that I have some we're in the middle where there's going to be darkest darks. And going in with some yellow. So maybe some on the trunks too. All right, now, once again, normally I would let this dry. So that's, that's important to realize because this does not cover quite as well. So I'm going back in and I'm saying, oh, I want this rhythm of yellow flowing throughout. So let me resist this. Maybe just a dash or two up there. Maybe a little bit more there. All right, so I take that and I'm taking some phthalo blue and just laying that blur through. But I still know that I'm going to have some of that yellow because I resisted it. So, say I pull in some greens now. This was a technique that um, John Singer Sargent used a lot. He was one of the, I think the first to start using it, but it's really easy. But remember that two things. There are two things to remember whenever you're using this. Remember that it does not come off. I don't care what people say, it does not come off. Okay, so I'm pulling that down. Let's say, I, well, well, and you can see how you could do another layer here. You know, before you drop in burnt sienna, you can just have that flow. So then let's say, uh, you always want to make sure it doesn't come off. It will not come off. So only put it where you are sure that you want it. And the other thing to remember is any cool tools um, techniques like this. If you use them in every every single painting, all over the painting, they get really gimmicky. Um, you're painting, oh that's the lady that paints the the cool stuff with the wax resist that has those cool colors showing through. That's no fun. Who wants to just paint who wants to be, your paintings to be recognized by a interesting technique. So use them in paintings, don't overuse it. Okay, so you see the idea where it has the nice little resist, pulls that down, good to go. Another thing about wax resist is it does matter what your paper you're using it on. So here, a little paint on that, just why I use it dry. Notice this arches, beautiful. Here, it looks very, very different. It's slick, it doesn't have the little pits that it goes on the surface with. Slick paper, rough paper. So I hope that gives you some ideas on using wax resists. The only things to remember are it differs with the type of paper you use it on. Don't use it too much or it gets really gimmicky and it never comes off. So only use it where you're sure you want it. Thanks for watching.